So it's been a while since I've made any upgrades for the mini lathe. The ones I did last year have worked really well, however there are still one or two that I'd like to do. I've been meaning to add a spindle lock for quite some time. I've always found tapping and cutting threads on this lathe to be very awkward. There isn't much space and holding the chuck can be quite awkward, especially with a camera in the way. Now I've seen several designs for mini lathe spindle locks and the design I'm opting to go with is going to be a clamping ring that clamps onto the spindle. I'm going to make it from some 6mm aluminium plate. I would have preferred to use brass, but it was a lot easier to get my hands on this aluminium. Plus making this from brass was a lot more expensive. Now strictly speaking, the best way to do this would be to use a CNC router or mill. Doing it with a CNC router reduces the time from over an hour to probably less than 15 minutes or so. However my DIY one isn't big enough, so I'll be doing it the long way around on the manual mill. The first thing that I want to do is cut a hole for the spindle. Because I'm cutting through the plate, I'll initially be holding the work down on a sacrificial piece of wood. It's just a leftover piece of scrap from an old project. To cut the initial hole, I'm going to use a hole saw. Technically, this one is only made for wood, but I've gotten away using wood tools before on aluminium. It's not great for the tool, though the tool is still made from a tool steel. And that turned out okay. Now the closest hole saw I have is about 20mm undersized, so I'll take it to its final size using my boring head. Now this is the first time that I'm using the boring head with the boring bar mounted horizontally, and I'm really blown away by how well it's working. To do this though, I have had to cut the boring bar down to about 30mm long, so I'll probably have to order a few more. I probably could have used an off-cut of high-speed steel, though I didn't think of that at the time. And that's really good. It's slightly oversized and that's what I was aiming for. Next I'll clamp it back onto the piece of wood and I'll use the milling machine to square up the work. With the part squared up, I want to quickly face the part to remove the large scratches. Because it's a large thin piece, I'll reverse the vice jaw on the moving jaw which will allow me to machine the part with it right up against that large flat surface on the moving jaw. The next thing that I want to do is cut a rounded profile to form the ring shape. This is the part that you'd really want a CNC router for, or I guess a rotary table, though I don't have one. Now I know full well this isn't what a dividing head is made for, but I wanted to see if I could cut the radius with it. And the answer is a resounding no, and I guess I'm not that surprised. I fed it in both directions to see what would happen, and I quickly found out that it just wasn't going to work. So I quickly abandoned that idea before I damaged anything. My backup method is to do it the old fashioned way. 
I marked it up and cut the bulk away with a hacksaw and I used coarse cut files to take it down to its final shape. If I wasn't removing so much material, I'd probably use the die filer. And whilst it's not perfect, I am happy with how it turned out. The next thing that I need to do is make a little extension that will allow me to clamp the ring. Initially when planning this, I was going to use 8mm thick plate, but I just couldn't get any. So what I'm doing here is I'm making an extra piece that's a little bit wider that should allow me to tap some M6 holes for the locking bolt. And that's the part done. What I need to do now is attach it to the main ring. Now I don't have a suitable welder for aluminium, so I'm resorting to using these brazing rods. At about $5 a piece, they aren't exactly the cheapest things, and currently they are pretty difficult to get a hold of. Having used them a few times in the past, I'm not a huge fan of these particular ones. I found that they need excessive heat to work, I've tried a few methods, but they really only start to melt near the melting point of the aluminium, and frankly that is a little bit too high. In fact, in the video you can probably see that the base metal is starting to melt a bit. Thankfully though, in the end, I do end up with a half decent bond. Next I'll cut a slot to allow the ring to clamp onto the spindle. Initially I was going to use a slitting saw, though I ran into a problem. The parts seemed to be cutting really well, though with the camera in the way, I just wasn't noticing that I was crashing the spindle into the part. Now I think we've all done this quite a few times on CNC machines, though this is probably the first time that I've done this on the manual mill. As a result of this, I opted to cut the slot the rest of the way by hand. And the final thing that I need to do is drill two holes to bolt it to the mounting bracket. And speaking of mounting brackets, I'll be making it from some 25 by 10 mild steel. My plan is to use these mounting holes that are located on the back of the headstock. I need to form a right handed bend in the bracket, so I'll cut a 90 degree V groove in the steel. And I've always found the easiest way to do it is to hold the part at a 45 degree angle in the vise and use a regular end mill and I'll pop it in the vise and hammer it over. And looking back at the footage, I certainly didn't let the steel get hot enough. And I'll quickly weld up the joint. Now the bracket is slightly too short, so I'll also weld on an extra piece of steel to extend its height. The final thing that I'll do is add some putty and sand it back before I spray paint it. I wasn't too sure what colour to go for at first, but I eventually settled for a flat black to match the other flat black parts on the legs. And here are the parts after a few coats. And you know what, I'm actually pretty happy with how they turned out. So let's mount it.
The part bolts on using some M5 cap head screws and I gave myself a lot of margin so I can adjust it so it doesn't rub up against the spindle. And you know what, that actually looks a lot better than I thought it would. I will admit, it is a little bit bulky, but it works really well. One thing I was a bit concerned about was it permanently deforming when I clamp it, but there isn't too much movement in the clamp, so when I undo it, it seems to spring back to its original shape. Overall, whilst there were a lot of problems and a lot of mistakes getting to this point, I'm pretty happy with it. The preferred way would still be to use a CNC router, but I'm pretty happy with it, I had a lot of fun doing it, and I learned a lot of lessons here. Overall, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something new, thanks for watching, see you next time.